Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to, uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, things look, uh, a little different from the last we saw this game in a number of ways. And, uh, the reason why I'm starting here is I'm gonna elaborate on what exactly I'm doing uploading more Ocarina of Time videos, because it's probably kind of confusing. I beat the game last year. Uh, probably one of my more favorite projects from last year, honestly. I had a lot of fun playing through Ocarina of Time. Uh, this is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. This was basically a port, or I guess not really a port, more of a remake of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time uh, that was made for the 3DS. Uh, it's pretty much the same game. Uh, the only thing they really change... Uh, from my knowledge, is they, uh, well, obviously the graphics, but, uh, they also, uh, they also make, uh, equipment managing a lot more, uh, simplified. So some of the, uh, nuances I kind of talked about a little bit in the Ocarina of Time playthrough, like all the, uh, water temple, um, equipping and de-equipping and stuff like that. Uh, stuff like that's made simpler, but for the most part, the game is still intact. Uh, but this particular version that I'm playing is not the original Ocarina of Time, uh, rather the Ocarina of Time Master Quest, uh, which was basically, I don't want to call it a mod, but it was like a recreation of the Ocarina of Time game uh, that was made initially for the Nintendo 64 disk drive, which never came out. And instead... They actually kept the idea and brought it for the Nintendo GameCube instead. It was actually a uh, pre-order bonus. So they had basically a game that had the original Ocarina of Time, and it had this version uh, called Master Quest, which um, it's essentially the same game, but they actually make the game harder, and they changed like a lot of the puzzles around in the uh, dungeons. Uh, literally, the only difference will be the dungeons. So, the dungeons have kind of new content. You'll find, like, items in different places and stuff like that. Uh, Skulltulas are in different places as well. And uh, also, the biggest thing that I haven't even mentioned yet, the map, uh, the original Ocarina of Time map, is actually mirrored. So, uh, what was on the left is now on the right, and, you know, basically stuff like that. Uh, so for this particular playthrough, I'm not going to be playing through the whole game again. Obviously, that'll take way too much time. Uh, I'm just going to be playing through uh, the dungeons. So I'll get to a dungeon, I'll play through it, show where all the sculptures are. If I have to come back for one later, I will. Uh, but once I complete the dungeon, I'm going to cut footage and uh, come back to the next dungeon. So I'm only going to show the dungeons. I'm not going to show any of the story or all the stuff in between. Uh, what you're seeing right now is pretty much the only thing you'll see as far as the uh, main part of the game is concerned. I, th I think that'll be a good idea, just so I don't have to play through the game twice. I mean, it's a fun game. I wouldn't mind playing through it 100% twice because it is so good. But again, I just did that last year. Um, the Ocarina of Time playthrough was very good. Like I said, it's probably my favorite playthrough from last year. Uh, you guys actually voted for it to be the uh, fifth best Let's Play I did last year, but uh, for me it was my favorite, and I really enjoyed it. It's a really good Let's Play. I definitely recommend it. So if you wanna, if you wanna check that out, uh, please go ahead. I'll put a link to the original project in the video description. I'm trying to find some rupees so I can actually uh, <laughs> finish this little quest out because I think they give you five in the shop, and I need forty. Uh, before I can progress. Maybe there's one under this rock. Uh, nope. Eh, I'll just exit a building and come back out. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially how this playthrough is going to work. Uh, if you want to see, like I said, any of the main story and stuff like that, watch the original version. And I figured that this way I could show, um, essentially, the original Ocarina of Time, and then I can also show the Master Quest Edition along with the 3DS remake as well. So that way I cover all the different platforms of Ocarina of Time, and everything is hunky-dory as a result. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut footage right here to the first dungeon, which is the Great Deku Tree. I will uh, see, you guy there, see you guys there, and then we'll talk more about the game when we get there. So, uh, hold on, guys. Okay, guys, we are here inside the Great Deku Tree for the first dungeon. And I'm honestly getting really excited for this. Um, I guess a little fun fact, I suppose I could tell you guys, is um, 
Back in the day, like, I played uh, Master Quest back in the day, like, really, really long time ago. I never had the GameCube uh, pre-order disc or anything that had this version on it. Uh, but I did borrow it from a friend, and I did get a play through it all the way. And uh, in recent years, like, since I've gotten the YouTube channel and everything, I was doing a playthrough of this where basically whenever I beat a dungeon, I'd put, like, a mini-review of that dungeon on Facebook. But I never actually finished that. I got all the way to the uh, Water Temple, but then I stopped. Not because of the Water Temple, just because I kind of just lost interest and didn't do it. Uh, so yeah, I could actually uh, finish that now, I guess you could say, which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, you can already see differences right away. These little uh, Goma Sprouts actually are in the main room of the tree. You'll find like little differences like that everywhere, honestly. That's kind of what this game's all about, I feel like. Just kind of uh, seeing how they change all these dungeons and how they actually uh, get more difficult in some cases, or just in general just become a lot different than what they are initially. In like some cases, on a dungeon where like you start on the bottom and work your way to the top, uh, you may actually go to the top first and then you work your way up uh, to the bottom, or work your way down to the bottom. Stuff like that, those are basically the changes that you kind of... Uh, you kind of will see in this. Another thing right here is we can't actually open this web because uh, we don't have fire. We can't use fire right now. So we have to uh, quite literally uh, find our way through here. Uh, it doesn't look like the uh, spiders are on this though, so we can uh, climb right up here and do this. Uh, so yeah, I am looking forward to this. If you want to actually play this version of Ocarina of Time, uh, you can get it very easily by purchasing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. It's a Nintendo Selects now, so you can actually get it pretty cheap compared to, uh, like, the GameCube version, for example. Uh, but, um, yeah, like, that's the best way you can get this version of Ocarina of Time. And in order to unlock it, because you do have to actually unlock the game, is you have to beat the original game. And once you do, you'll get the option to play Master Quest, which is kind of cool. Okay, so there we go. We, uh... Oh, is that a keys? Yeah, it's a keys. Um, got you. Give me a heart. Oh, okay, no, he didn't. Oh, I'm half full health anyway. I must have gotten a heart from somewhere, because, like, I was like, I'm low health. Why do I have low health? But that explains it. Okay, so we can actually go in here. Ooh. Yeah, see, this room already gets a lot different, too. I'm wondering if I should maybe destroy all these guys first. Um, you know what, I'll risk it. I'm going to see what I can do without having to do any of that stuff. We... oh my god. <laughs> I think it's weird. I think you actually have to uh, like go to all these platforms just to fight these guys. Like You don't have to like open a chest. You actually have to fight these guys first. Which could be interesting. I could get uh, surprised here. Okay, they're not too bad, though, thankfully. Because, yeah, you fight these guys in the original Ocarina of Time. But they're, like, not really in the dungeon that much. They're literally just, like, in one room or so. So it's really interesting how they kind of try to include them a little more. And you'll also see, like, harder enemies in earlier temples, too. Like, you'll see a lot of adult Link enemies in Child Link dungeons. That's another, that's another oddity we'll see later on. Uh, okay, I can't get that. There is a torch there. Do I want to see what that torch will do? You know it. You know I want to do that. There we go. Okay. Now we can try to actually go across this. And naturally, you will see uh, Skulltulas. Uh, there's only one Skulltula we can get in this place. Uh, we actually need the Boomerang to get the three others that are in this temple. So yeah, they make uh, they make uh, Skulltula hunting a lot more tedious in uh, this game. But, it's only the dungeon ones that are affected. So all the Skulltulas in the overworld are in the their original locations. But like, for example, if there were like five... Skulltulas in a dungeon. Those five Skulltulas are still there. They're just probably and most likely in different places. 
so that's just, again, stuff you'll have to uh, look out for. And in between dungeons, I'll probably do a little bit of, like, side quest stuff. I won't be doing a whole lot of it. Like, if there's, like, an easy piece of heart I can get, I may go ahead and get that or grab that. Did I get the slingshot? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. Um... I don't really see myself using Deku Nuts. I'm not a big Deku Nut user. I might use it in some bosses, and some boss fights, but uh, for the most part, not really a huge fan of that Slingshot. Or, Deku Nuts, I'm sorry. I love the Slingshot. Slingshot's great. Slingshot, great. Would sling again. And as usual, we can break through there, as we normally do. I probably could go back up, though, because I think uh, that one switch that I hit actually uh, lit the torches for, like, all of those rooms to the side, so I could probably go back up and get the, uh, what's probably going to end up being the compass and what's at originally in the slingshot room. <laughs> so you know how that is. Okay, so... Oh, but look at this. There's a switch behind this webbing. How the hell am I supposed to do that? Simple, my dear Watson. Or Linkson. Well, I don't know. <laughs> would the, uh... <laughs> would the Watson of the Zelda world be named Linkson? I have really no idea. There's no way of knowing. Okay. Oh yeah, that's just that chest that pops up. I think that's the recovery heart chest, so... That's nothing major. Um... I almost want to go back up there to grab the compass. I think I am going to do that. I know it's not really a huge thing... I don't need that recovery heart, though, so that's one thing, but I do want to see what's up here, honestly. And yeah, the Sculptula that's normally here is not here, so uh, they changed that one around. Okay, so did the... Uh, yeah, the flames have been lit on all the uh, torches here. Uh, Link is also left-handed, which is kind of interesting. I think, like, he's always left-handed, right? Like, that's that, that's the thing. Like, he's always been left-handed. It's just when they made, uh... When they made Twilight Princess for both GameCube and the Wii, they kind of, like, showcased that more. Where they, like, changed him in, like, the Wii version. But in the GameCube version, they kept him, like, what he's supposed to be or something. Because there's traditionally more right-handed people than left-handed people. Oh man, we have a big, big scrub here. A big baba. And not a scrub, he's a baba. A <laughs> big baba. Can I actually, okay. I'm gonna try something. If I just hit this, will that go away? Yeah, okay. I'll do that next time. You, you can kill the eggs and then get rid of those guys before they even appear. Which is something I probably should have been doing from the get-go. Um, I'm gonna do this. Get rid of you. Yeah, they have, like, those eggs enemies, like, in every single room. Probably because, like, you know, you're not, you shouldn't be used to fighting them. They're not in, really, the original game that much. So, yeah, this is definitely the compass. Oh, but look at that up there. I think that that is a prime sculptural location up there. So we'll have to investigate that later. Um, where did you... This is actually something I learned from watching speedruns, but for this platform right there... Um, oh, shoot. I guess it didn't really work in this game that much. But that platform... Uh, you normally jump across that to get the chest, but in the speed run, you actually don't want to go up that way. You want to uh, conserve that platform when you leave, so you don't have to shoot that switch. I always found that kind of interesting whenever I've watched speedruns of Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time is definitely, I think, one of the best speed games to watch. Maybe not so much anymore, although this, the new stuff is pretty cool, not gonna lie, but like... I feel like the Ocarina of Time speedrun these days, you skip so much of the game. And, like, it's kind of unfortunate that you do, because it's a great game, and I like seeing, like, all the dungeons unfold, but speedruns these days are about, like, trying to clip through walls and doing all that stuff, and it's just, eh. I just don't like that. But that's my own personal preference. I mean, like, like I said, the stuff there is cool. Not gonna lie, it's really, really cool. 
It's just not, you know, not really what I want to see when I want to watch a, someone playing through this game really, really fast. Okay, is he gonna... Oh, you actually don't get the hints in this game. Interesting. Hmm. Intriguing. Interesting. What the... Oh. I'm guessing when I do that, something will happen. Or that'll just open up. Isn't that where I came from, though? Yeah, I think that's where I came from, so let me see. Do I have to, like, bring in a torch from the other room? I think that's what I have to do. I think I have to, like, literally catch this on fire and bring that in. Yeah, that's exactly what you have to do. And I think you have just enough time to do that, too. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's see how they change the water room here, too. Oh, damn it, I didn't want to open that. <laughs> I wanted to save that heart for later if I needed it. And, like, I think they changed this around as well. Like, do you still go in the water? Is there still a water chest? Or a water switch? Oh, God. <laughs> One of those enemies in here, too. My god, the developers of this were evil. Okay, well, let me wait for this to come back. Oh, you know what? Oh my god. I think I know exactly what they want me to do. They want me to light this, <laughs> jump on the switch, and then make it over there. But, like, is there? I don't know. Okay, I'll wait for it to start to head back this way. There we go. Get the stick outs. Tough fit. Tough fit, but I made it work. Also, look at that rogue t a Song of Time block right there. That's another thing they do. They like to put a lot of those Song of Time blocks in this game. So you like, you'll see a lot of them. I guess they were a, they were very fond of the Song of Time. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you are, that's your prerogative, I suppose. Um, shoot. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, wait, there's more. Ah, damn it. switch in here. Oh, there's keys in here. Um, there we go. Any other sneaky surprises I couldn't see? Nope, just that. We are kind of heading towards the end, though. Like, this is, like, one of the last rooms. Now they have graves. <laughs> oh, there's a sculpture up there. Interesting. Okay, so I know where two of the Skulltulas are. I don't really know where the last one is. Probably it's still in that same room that the uh, original fourth Skulltula was in. That would be my guess. Okay, there's the exits. I kind of want to get rid of that. Keys and just all the enemies in general. So I think if I do that, I'll light the torches. Okay, you have to do this fast. Shoot. I want to go through this again so I can... There we go. Okay, I want to investigate this room and see what it's all about before I leave. That's the room I came from. Yeah, that's the room I want to go to. 
And honestly, like, the sooner I light these torches and light, uh, ignite the webs, I won't have to do it again. Just kind of the logic I'm using. Yep, as I figured. Scorchel in there, probably can't get it yet, so I'll come back later. Because I'll have to anyway, so... Wait, this is, this is the right way, right? Yeah. No, 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 I have to go in a hole. That's right. This is the right way. Oh god, big Deku Baba. Big Baba. My god. Stay next to this block, yep. We still get all the Navi hints, even though we don't need them. I want to go down there and grab that recovery heart before I do this. I feel like there's still another puzzle we have to do, though. Oh, well, there's a heart right there. Uh, let's see what this uh, business scrub actually gives us. Oh, Deku shield. No. <laughs> Was there any way I could lose the shield? I mean, there's fire, but, like, I don't think the fire could actually hit you, honestly. Okay, so this is going to be actually kind of difficult. I'm going to have to make it pretty far through this room. Can I get up there? I can't. Okay. How am I going to do this? Is this a... Uh... Hold on. Okay, I can climb up that. I just can't climb up the, rock, the block. That's good to know. Gonna be cutting this pretty close. I lost that stick, but uh, I think you kind of have to lose that stick at that point. Okay, so now we gotta do this. Oh, since they're mirrored. Does that mean this one first, then this one? It has to be that, I think. Oh, no? Okay. I think it's the same pattern, then. It just fools you because, uh, you think they'd be mirrored, but they're not. I'm actually almost dead. Nope, that's not it either. <clears throat> 23 is number one, my ass. <laughs> okay, well... I guess I just gotta keep trying these until I get this right. I'll probably end up dying, actually. Okay, shoot. Let me get these hearts. Okay, so I tried... Damn it! Okay, I'll just try this now. There's only so many solutions I can try. It's not that one. Okay, try that one again. Okay. The, it's it's got to be the only other one I haven't tried. I think I've tried them all at this point. There we go. Ah. <sighs> 
So it was. Thirteen is number two? I guess. <laughs> Thirteen is number two, or thirty-one is number two. I don't know. <laughs> Hard to tell, because again, it's supposed to be mirrored, so it's like, is it that? Is it that? I have no idea. Uh, so, that out of the way, we have full health and we're ready to take on the boss. Uh, the boss doesn't really change at all. Uh, there's really no reason to show this, but I will. Uh, just to give you, like, something to look forward to. I mean, it's a boss. When you reach the end of the dungeon, you fight the boss, so it's like it's part of the dungeon. So I'll go ahead and show this as well. And uh, we have good old Goma Boys, or Goma Queen. Goma, really not much of a threat. Uh, one thing you should look out for, though, and I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but uh, in boss battles, from my understanding, you actually take double damage. So if you get hit, you'll be taking a lot of damage and you just don't want to get hit. Thankfully for Goma, it's not so bad because it's freaking Goma. It's like, whatever. I'm not even going to use any of the strong strokes to still only take like two cycles anyway. But yeah, you take double damage for bosses, so just be careful of that. Uh, that'll definitely become probably more difficult in future uh, dungeons. Heck, I feel like Baronade will actually be kind of tricky because Baronade's a boss where you... It's kind of hard to avoid damage in some places. Uh, but yeah, that was the Great Deku Tree, and that's going to do it for uh, this first dungeon. I will be back when we reach Dodongo's Cavern, which is the second dungeon. Uh, not sure what I'll be doing in between. Obviously, there's a lot of story stuff going on. There's a lot of side quests that do kind of open up. I'm going to probably try to get both bottles, just so I have them. And uh, maybe a few pieces of heart. Maybe I'll have five heart pieces, or heart containers, uh, before I go to Dodongo's Cavern. Haven't really decided yet. I'll figure it out as I go. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you folks in a little bit for... Dodongo's Cavern, if this is the end of the video, see you guys later, see you next video.